post trial, and it looks like there's been a new supplemental motion for a new trial that's been filed by the defense in this case. Correct? Yes, correct. It's just some additional facts that we filed regarding our motion for a new trial. Yeah, we don't have anything additional. We don't have any arguments in support of this. Okay. And then I think there's a follow-up response. Do you need any additional time to follow up response to the supplemental? Judge, I don't believe that I need additional time to follow up response to that. Okay. All right. Very good. Any argument with regards to the motion for a new trial? Not on behalf of the defense. We are asking on the motion as written. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, counsel. We'll take this matter under advisement. We'll be in recess until tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock.
to take this stand and manipulate the jury. But it didn't work, Kyler. It didn't work. Again. The jury came back with the verdicts, finding him guilty of voluntary manslaughter for Cara's case and guilty of murder in the second degree for Jessica's case. And they sentenced him as recommended to the 15 years on Cara's case and life on Jessica's case. And as this family sits out there right now, there is no amount of time that can truly bring justice. And one thing that the state oftentimes tells victims in these situations is justice doesn't come in the form of a number. It just doesn't. It comes from within, and it comes from your ability to find peace somehow. But the reality is, when you have a defendant like Kyler Muse, it becomes darn near impossible to find peace like that. And even, again, as he sits there smirking right now, Judge, it becomes impossible for the state to not address directly to him his lack of remorse, his failure to ever accept any responsibility for anything. And why don't I just point out to you something that was not lost on the state. When that defendant took the stand, Judge, he took the stand and one of the first things that he said on direct exam was that he's an animal lover. And I know that this court remembers our pretrial conferences and the arguments that were made at that point, and the state was prohibited from talking to Kyler Hughes about the charges he faced for killing kittens. So when that defendant takes a stand and says that he's an animal lover, that was exactly who Kyler Hughes is. Is he takes a stand, he smirks, and he knows he's trying to manipulate the situation. But the manipulation ends today. It ends today. Kyler Hughes deserves every minute of every day of the rest of his life in the Department of Corrections. And just like Ms. Hastings said, we'll never stop fighting for you, Kyler. We as the state and all the victims in this courtroom will never stop fighting to keep you in prison for the rest of your life. I am making them to the court, and I'm also addressing the victim's family in the courtroom, Judge. Right. And as I said, the state will do everything. We will be at every parole hearing that Kyler Hughes has, as will the family members, because he has demonstrated by his actions that he will kill again. He has demonstrated that he is a danger to the community, and he flaunts that in the face of this community, time after time after time. And that time, Judge, is today. It's the state's recommendation that the defendant be sentenced to the 15 years in the Missouri Department of Corrections for murdering Kara Kopetsky. It's the state's recommendation that the defendant be sentenced to life in the Missouri Department of Corrections for murdering Jessica Rollins. And Judge, we ask that this court run those sentences consecutively. If there was ever a defendant that deserved to spend every minute of every day of that sentence in prison, it is this man right here. We ask that those sentences be run consecutively because we have two families, two young girls, who were brutally murdered by this man, years and years apart. We have a defendant that between 2007 and 2016 continued to live his life exactly as he wanted, flaunting the fact that he had brutally murdered Carl, confessing to witness after witness, and then repeating his actions. He has demonstrated that he is a danger to every female that he comes into contact with. And for that reason, Judge, for the very fact of who Kyler Hughes is and what he has done to these girls in this family, we ask that the court run those sentences consecutively. Judge, we have stated our legal reasons for a new trial in this case, uh, and we will be bringing those legal reasons to the Court of Appeals. And all I want to really say today here is that we ask the court to run these sentences concurrent. And that is because the jury in this case heard the evidence. There was much evidence, in fact, that they didn't hear. And based on what they heard, they knew that these sentences were probable, 
They did not know that there is a minimum that has to be served on count two, and that to run these sentences consecutive is contrary to what the jury intended, and in fact uh, constitutes a type of judicial override, which is that is all that we are asking is that they be run concurrent. The court heard the evidence in this case. I'm not going to argue the facts of the case or anything that was presented in court any further. We just ask that these sentences be run concurrent. No. All right, does the defendant have any legal cause why sentence and judgment shouldn't be pronounced in this case? No legal cause other than what we have stated in our motion study in the The court reviewed the sentencing assessment report that was provided to the court in this case. Also, they uh, reviewed the uh, extensive history uh, in this uh, case. Of course, uh, going to uh, order a sentence of 15 years in Missouri Department of Corrections on count one uh, in this case uh, for the voluntary manslaughter. On um, count two, courts don't order a life in the Department of Corrections in this case uh, to run consecutive to count one uh, in this matter. Uh, Mr. Bukes, I need to ask you some questions about uh, your you raise your right hand. I'll let you sit there. That's fine. You saw me swear the testimony you're about to give this call. Be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth that we got. Okay. All right. Hey, have your attorneys done everything you asked? Uh, they done everything you asked them to do? Yes, I'm aware that there's a uh, 440 that I have a right to file, and uh, at that time there will be counsel, post conviction counsel assigned to me, and I have the right to discuss this with them at that time. Okay. Uh, have they? Have your attorneys done everything you got here? They done everything you asked. I will discuss this with my post conviction counsel only, not with you. Okay. Now this is your time to tell me about all this. So this is. Uh, I, I'm sure you've gotten advice. Is that what I'm? I admire your attempts to uh, foil my uh, appeals, but uh, no, thank you. Sorry, not feel like this. Okay. Discussing this. So uh, have, have they done everything you asked them to do? Have you had uh, the Are you my post conviction counsel? Uh, you, uh, did you? Mr. Youth is not going to answer any questions. Well, I want to make sure he understands. I'm asking him now. So this is the uh, the time. So uh, so has uh, had the attorneys refused to do anything you asked them to do? I'm not going to answer any more questions. Thank you, sir. All right. And have they. Uh, have you had an opportunity, ample opportunity, to talk to them about your case? <coughs> and again, you're indicating you're not going to respond to any of my questions. Uh, so, uh, again, uh, have, have, they, have you been uh, uh, able to talk to them uh, about your case over the last, uh, I think, four years? What do you think? Oh, I'm asking you that question. And then, again, uh, you understand that uh, I'm asking these questions because this is the time in which I'm, you know, we're getting to this. Uh, you understand that uh, you do have a right to a Form 40, correct? Right? You know that you're going to have the uh, Form 40 given to you today, correct? And you understand that I'm going to hand you a 2915, uh, the Rule 2915. Uh, uh, in this case. Uh, additionally, I want to make sure that you under, uh, understand uh, and I'll make sure you, you tell me you're not going to respond, but that's okay. Uh, I just need to know uh, and I'm putting it out there. You don't have to respond if you don't want to. Uh, you understand that uh, your attorneys uh, here today, uh, they've represented you through the trial and they've done what you asked them to do. Have they refused to do anything you asked them to do? Have you had ample opportunity to talk to uh, talk to you about the case? I'm asking all these questions. I know you you can hear me because you've responded earlier. So 
I'm making sure that uh, you understand I'm asking these questions in regards to your representation. Correct? That's okay. Like I said, I'm making the record just like right here for you, so I'm just making sure. Now, you also have this form 40 that you're going to be uh, looking into. This is your motion to vacate, set aside, correct judgment for sentence. If you believe the sentence that I've just imposed violates the U.S. Constitution, state constitution, the state of Missouri, the state statutes of the state of Missouri, or if you believe this court should have jurisdiction and impose this sentence, you have to put those grounds and all other grounds in that form 40. The Rule 2915 will provide you the timeline in which you're supposed to uh, file that uh, form 40 uh, in this case. Uh, your attorneys have indicated that they're going to appeal, uh, which uh, I guess uh, are, you're going to file that notice of appeal? Yes, that will be filed by the Okay, and so uh, uh, that way uh, you will know uh, when the uh, Court of Appeals mandate comes down, and uh, that way you will have your timeline for that, and then that Rule 2915 that I'm going to hand to you, and the Rule and the form, uh, 40 I'm going to hand to you, that way you have that uh, in your possession. Uh, and I'm handing it to you. Uh, it looks like uh, Ms. Hastings has got it, and she's going to, uh, uh, I guess, uh, give that to you, uh, since I want to make sure that you have that uh, in your possession with regards to this case, okay? And what I'll do is I'll remain in custody of the Sheriff's Department for transport to the Department of Corrections in this case. I'll order that there be no bond in this case. All right, and we'll stand in recess. Thank you. All right.